Coming up, we take a look at updates for information protection solutions for Microsoft 365 for pervasive protection of your data at rest, in use, and in motion, wherever it may reside. Whether that's in Microsoft Cloud, SaaS apps, in non-Microsoft Clouds, and even in your own data center in on-premises file servers. We'll also show you how the new unified classification supports an even broader set of file types, including formats such as Adobe PDF. So I'm joined today by Gagan from the Azure Information Protection Team. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Simon. Great to be here. So since the last time we looked at Azure Information Protection on the show, there's been a lot of chatter in the public about the topic. And we're seeing lots more data breaches hitting the news than ever before. Also, there's a whole lot of regulatory pressure from GDPR. It's literally a different world now. And you know, it's almost inevitable that now more than ever, we need to address the topic of information protection with the cloud, social, and just the dynamic nature in which we work and communicate today, sharing information is almost second nature to us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a new wave of productivity. I mean, it's easier than ever before to access your data wherever you are on any device of your choice. And uh, this also brings a heightened sense of responsibility about data security. So what's the approach that we're taking to information protection and how are we actually evolving that? So the first thing I want to point out is that given the exponential amount of data generated in our environments today, not all of the data needs protection. So how do you know what data to protect and what not to protect? The author of the document is the best judge of what data is sensitive and what's not. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to pick up a document. Mm -hmm. It's marked as internal, but I can always go to confidential credit card data, and I can then go and very easily uh, make this document confidential. As you can see here, the header, the watermark, uh, and even the footer are set up correctly. And this document is now protected as well to my organization. And all of it was possible because uh, my IT admin was able to set up this label called confidential credit card data. And not only that, he was able to add encryption policies to this document right here. So in the past, those capabilities have actually applied to data inside of uh, Microsoft services, such as Office 365. Yes, and it's always been our vision to protect all your data, whether it's at rest, in use, or in motion. What I'll show you today is the next chapter of that vision, where we're extending these capabilities to help you to discover, classify, label, and protect your data, even when it sits outside of the Microsoft Cloud, such as on-premises, on file servers, in other cloud repositories or SaaS apps, or even on other platforms such as Apple Mac. And this also applies to non-Microsoft file types, including by popular demand PDFs in Adobe Reader. Also, to add to this, we are making these capabilities available with an SDK. And finally, many of us are in the email world, and with our capabilities in Office 65 message encryption, we protect your sensitive information in emails that you send to both internal and external users. Okay, that sounds great. I know you've got a lot to show us, so can we see some of this in action? Yes. So let's start out with the preview of our consistent labeling experience in the Security and Compliance Center. So wherever I define the labels, Azure or Office 65, they are consistently applied across all of your workloads. So as you can see, uh, we already have created a few labels mm -hmm. uh, in the compliance, in Security and Compliance Center. Uh, I'm going to create a new label. So I click on Create a Label. I am going to give it a name, Confidential Credit Card Data. I will provide a similar tooltip and click Next. So what you will see now is that I can apply two types of policies for protection and for retention. For protection, mm -hmm. Uh, I will choose the advanced protection and then encryption. But first, let's go and take a look at what options are available to me. So I will click on, and you'll see that I have options ranging from block users from sending email messages outside the organization mm -hmm. to sending incident reports in emails. Okay. But in this case, as we said, we're going to click on uh, advanced protection, customize the settings, and add a few users from my organization. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to choose all the users that exist in my organization and click Add and save this policy. So now the protection action, I've already applied it. Mm -hmm. The next thing for me is to go and choose the retention policies that I want to apply for my organization. Okay. So I will turn on the retention policies 
And in this case, the default is retain the content for seven years. What it really means is that if you have a document that has this label, then for the next seven years, the document is going to get retained. That's a great default. I'm just going to choose that now and click Next. We also have some advanced options available for you that allow you to add watermark, headers, and footers. So in this case, I'm going to add a watermark. Mm -hmm. and, and I have the choice to add whatever text I want for the watermark. In this case, I would choose the same text as I had added to the title of the label. I will click Save, and then click Next. Okay. Now we're going to add conditions to automatically apply these labels to these documents. And that's really important because lots of users actually don't always label their documents. That's correct. And that's one of the feedbacks that we hear from you, that you would want to make sure that the automatic labeling happens more and more. So now I'm going to automatically apply conditions to this label. I'm going to click on Next, and I'm going to add conditions. I will choose sensitive info types. What you will realize here is that Microsoft offers more than 80 information types already available for you. So we're going to click on Add, and you can see these information types showing up on the screen. Uh, in this case, we want because this is a credit card uh, specific label, I'm going to choose the word credit card, choose my sensitive type, and save. Now I can review all my settings, and then I will just click on Create, and this will basically create a new label for me that I can start publishing for my organization by clicking on the Publish uh, Label button that you see here. And now, that label is going to apply across data in all of your workloads, wherever they are. And I know a lot of people that are watching are going to be really pleased to see that we have that kind of consistent labeling. How does what we've actually set up here translate to services outside of Microsoft? So the idea here is that you create your classification and labeling policies once, mm -hmm. and they apply everywhere. Okay. Uh, for the data inside of your organization on file servers or SharePoint on-prem, we're introducing a new capability called the AIP scanner. Very cool. So as you can see on my screen, uh, I have a document which contains a credit card number, mm -hmm. which means it should be marked as sensitive data. Absolutely. So let me show you how AIP scanner will help you scan and protect this data. So first, I'm going to close this document. Uh, you can see behind the scenes, I have a folder which contains a bunch of files uh, from Microsoft Word files and PDFs. Mm -hmm. And we are now going to start running the scanner. So a simple PowerShell commandlet called start service ISP scanner will run this scanner. And what will happen behind the scenes is that you will see that the icons changed. So these files are now getting protected mm -hmm. uh, with the lock sign. What you'll also see is, is just not about Microsoft file formats, but in this case, PDFs and other file types are equally supported as well. Mm -hmm. Basically, behind the scenes, the scanner is discovering all of these files, and it is now classifying, labeling, and protecting these files as well. I am now going to open a file and show you that the file actually got classified and protected as well, just, I, just as I was able to do it manually. So you can see it's the same file, mm -hmm. but now it contains a sensitivity of confidential. You can see that it has applied the permissions, uh, which means in my organization, anybody can now open this file, but nobody outside my organization. So Simon, if you now go to SharePoint, mm -hmm. what do you see? OK, so I'm seeing the, the file is there, the order receipt file. If I go and click on the three dots, and then go select Details, then it's going to try and preview that file. But OK, it's going to fail because of the, uh, that's what we expect, because of the, um, the protection. And then if I look yes. in the properties, I can see the labels. Very good. Absolutely. And that's because now Office 65 also recognizes this common classification label scheme. OK, so that's pretty slick. And presumably, I can set up AIP Scanner as a batch process to discover and protect my data on a regular schedule. Yes, that's right. Uh, you can now configure the scanner so it runs periodically on your file servers so you can discover and protect data as it comes to the file scanner. Mm -hmm. Now, one more thing. Uh, you can see that I'm on a MacBook. Uh, I'm going to download the file that we had just uploaded. And now I'm going to try to open this file. When I double-click on this file, uh, you will see that it is now trying to authenticate me, but it's actually sending a text to my phone. It's actually forcing me to do an MFA, or multi-factor authentication. That's conditional access working in the background for you. And it is set to require multi-factor authentication, such that when I open a confidential document on a non-domain joint device, which is this document, Simon, mm -hmm. um, I would be asked to verify my identity. So in this case, I'm going to go to my phone, 
and I see that I have received the code for MFA, I'm going to put in this code and click verify. So once I do that, I have finished my authentication. Mm -hmm. And now the Microsoft Word is trying to go into open the document. And that's what happens here. So as you can see here, as I mentioned before as well, um, Office on Mac now has the same familiar look on Office on Windows uh, for the policies of labeling and protection. In this case, the policy is confidential credit card data. I can click on view permissions and it will give me the same experience and I would have on Windows where it shows me that it's me and my organization that have ability to open this document, but nobody else. Okay, so we've seen the unified classification labels on premises, across Microsoft services, and even in non-Microsoft platforms like this Mac. What we haven't seen yet is this working with other SaaS applications in non-Microsoft clouds. Okay, so I'm going to take this other document called Confidential Architecture, for which I actually don't know the sensitivity of the document yet. Mm -hmm and I'm going to upload it to Box. And now, as you can see, in near instant mode, the file has now moved to version v2. Behind the scenes, Microsoft Cloud App Security has detected the file and has classified and protected it. Simon, why don't you now try to download the file? OK, let me uh, go ahead and do that. So I'll uh, go back here, and I'm inside a box, um, and it's the confidential architecture document. Um, so let's go ahead and open that. It's not giving me a preview if I download. It's uh, going to download it, and I'll select to open it in Word. And Word's asking me, asking me to sign in with my credentials. Yes, remember, when we created the confidential label earlier, we specified that the access is only available for my company's employees only. So your access will be blocked till you provide identity to my own organization. Of course, many people work with vendors outside of their organizations who might be using a number of different email services. And obviously, we want to be able to protect that information, but we don't want to get in the way of that kind of productivity. What kind of things have you got there? So we recently announced uh, a new functionality or a new version of Office 65 message encryption, which is built on top of Azure Information Protection. This allows you to send secure emails from Office 65, or even if you have a hybrid exchange infrastructure, to anyone inside or outside the organization. You can send protected emails to any email address, including Office 65, Microsoft accounts such as Hotmail or Outlook.com, and Google ID to just name a few. And you as recipient can open these emails from any app on any device. So now I'm going to show you a demo of it. So I'm here in Outlook and I'm going to share a confidential piece of information with you, Simon, on your Gmail account. So I'm going to now send this email, and hopefully it reaches you. OK, so I've signed into Gmail on my machine here. And yep, I've got that email from you. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And I can see that I've got some branding here that tells me that it's from your company. It's got your name there. And I've got this big uh, read the message button in the middle of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And it's asking me to sign in with my uh, Google account, presumably that's the same one that I've signed into my um, Gmail with. So we'll hit the sign in button there. So in this case, we are pre-federated with Google, which means as soon as you give your consent, we know that we have proven your identity and we will give you access to the email that I just sent you. That's pretty awesome. I'm here in the document. I can read uh, all of the contents of that email uh, directly inside of the browser. That's pretty cool. Yes, and uh, so try forwarding it and okay. see what happens. So I've got the forward button up here, uh, except it's been grayed out. Right, it's grayed out because I sent the email to you uh, with a do not forward fashion, which means we don't allow your, you as a recipient to be able to forward this email to others. This is pretty cool. It means that my email is protected no matter which service it actually ends up in, and those protections are always going to be respected. What is it that you guys are going to build next? <laughs> so we want to continue to expand these capabilities beyond Microsoft services and also apps. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you here is the, the work we have done with Adobe mm -hmm. to further extend our classification and protection capabilities uh, within the Adobe Reader. So why don't we just go ahead and open up a protected PDF from your desktop, Simon? OK, so uh, I've already opened up the um, Adobe Reader application, and I've got the confidential document that we want to look at loaded in the middle there. Let um, me just go ahead and just double click on that. And it's opened the document up. I can uh, read the text in there. Left hand side over here, I've got this padlock icon. Um, if I go there and have a look at permission details, it's actually telling me exactly what the document restrictions are. And I can see that it's 
also being protected by that security method there that says Microsoft Azure Information Protection. Right. So we are working with Adobe, as I said, to open these uh, protected PDFs in Adobe Reader. And at some point in the future, we would make uh, this available in preview form as well. Really good to hear about all of the updates to Azure Information Protection in Microsoft 365. Whereabouts can people go to learn more? So you can keep up with the latest information protection capabilities uh, on our blog for Microsoft 365. And also check out the following link to see more on Azure Information Protection in Microsoft 365. And of course, to see all of the latest in the tech action, subscribe to our Microsoft Mechanics channel to see the latest shows. Thank you for watching.